Well, hello, hi, and how you doing? Gordon of the Tech are here. Welcome to another thrilling and exciting episode of Ibachi Talk. Um, please grab yourself a chair, a libation, and join us, and we'll talk about enterprise class security. Mm -hmm. We're not talking just cyber, we're talking about your businesses, your companies, your homes, mm -hmm. everything is there. Not something you would get at the big box store, like how you should do it right. And I have, some, I have two great get, guests today. But I also had the fun meister because the security guy ain't here. He's afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and he's too nervous to be around all these security people, so he left. <laughs> he's abroad. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's abroad, so he's to speak. Very abroad. Very abroad, yes. Right. So I had the fun meister, as everybody knows, and more money than God is sitting here at the end of the table. So, so I have Lisa. Hi. I'm Lisa, Lisa. Uh, Bradshaw. Yep. Bradshaw. And she's with Linnell. I can still say who you're with. And we're not going to talk about necessarily Linnell, but you're, you're the Linnell. This is a huge... Um, systems integrator, I have a lot of experience with, and so on. And then we got Rich Lyman. Rich Lyman. I, I knew Absolutely. Rich when he had hair. That's right. Um, so <laughs> on his chin. I don't think you did. Yeah. <laughs> on his chin. As he's also with Linnell. Yeah. We're going to talk. We're going to get into the into this whole aspect of securing your enterprise, yeah. and how and how it, how it's changed over the decades. But first, we always like to let our um, um, viewer know who our guests are. So Lisa, give a little background. Where you went to where you went to school and how did sure. you get into this business? So I grew up in Oregon. Um, went to school in, in Portland. Go Beavers. Go nope. ducks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wrong again. Well, I, again. I, whatever. That would be you. They're all good. They're all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I got into the industry and moved actually to the East Coast and I started working for a company that was doing um, virtual tours online for real estate oh. and they took that technology and turned it into 360 imaging and that's when I got into the security into the industry security. and I was like 15, 16 years ago now. Okay, I thought you said you were 15 and 16 years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly oh, right. You, know, you started early, you started early. <laughs> okay, cool. So you've been, so you've been, you got 15, at least 15 years of experience in this business. Yep. And that's changed a ton. Oh, yeah, okay. a lot. Okay, yeah. we'll cover that in a second. And Mr. Lyman, sir, um, uh, where did you go to school? Uh, so I grew up in Danville, California, just a little little town in the East Bay. They're, they're near Warrior Town. So okay. um, uh, I, I went into the Air Force. So uh, during the first Persian Gulf War, I was an uh, electronics technician on a C-5 and got to fly around and wear a cool suit and flew around in a, in a big, big airplane. So it sort of got my electronics background, as it were, there, and then sort of, like all of us, sort of fell into the security industry on accident and, and haven't looked back since. That was 22 years 22. ago. So you're 22. So we, yeah. we're sitting here collectively with almost 50 years' experience yeah. in the security industry, long right. before the hackers and That's right. Or right in the beginning time. So we've got some really good experience here. And then we got a guy who went to Berkeley. Eh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Cal, it's not, a hard it's not a hard school to get into. <laughs> Go there and beat the car. It's a That's real right. school, easy school to get out of. That's right. <laughs> so one of the questions that, 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 uh, that comes up is like, no, does it, what's the size of this industry? What's the size? And you know, we talked about this earlier. So how big is the access controls, camera, physical security industry in this country? It's like... 100 million, 10 million. Yeah, it's billions. It's actually. billions. Yeah, so I think, what did we say it was? 80, 80, 80 billion, 80 billion. I think. 80, an 80 so it's an yeah. 80 billion with a B with industry. A B. So, That's right. And this is not talking about the stuff that I go to the big box stores and buy. No. We're talking no, no. about. This is high end corporate enterprise level, enterprise quality, software, hardware, right? This is what oh, the okay, federal so government define, uses. Okay, define enterprise quality because this is something that, you know, is it, is it like, uh, okay, go ahead. You tell me what it is. Uh, you know, on the most basic level, it tends yeah. to be a little bit more expensive, but that's because it's more sophisticated, right? right. So it's, it's intended for those military environments, federal government agencies, cities, counties, you name it, everywhere in between. But it's high quality products that are intended to solve unique problems, not sort of the residential application where... It's inexpensive, it sort of does a little bit, it works. If it doesn't work, you throw it away and you go buy a new one. That's not really what these technologies are for. And it's really about an integration platform, right? It's about pulling all these various technologies. It's not just a door unlocking, it's not just a camera, it's intercoms and intrusion panels and data and 
HR systems and finance systems and you name it. And, and your so, Active Directories and all the computer absolutely. systems. We're, and we're such. an integration company, so, yeah. so so even some of the smaller, like mom and pop shop, even or right. or even high end residential, they have access to this technology now and I think yeah. they sort of expect it now mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the general population sees that they've got a 4k TV and they want they want that same experience in their video surveillance for example or they want everything integrated and they want to be able to get on their phone and see what's going on and turn on their air conditioning and, and do all of that and then even in the smaller in some of the cities the police departments won't respond to alerts or alarms without visual ver verification. Mm. So there is some catalyst to push even smaller companies and individuals into this type of technology. And this, it's becoming more affordable now. It's because of it the, the it, need. It, it is. And, and, and if you're going to be a major player, and so we, we just happen to be the largest manufacturer in this space, um, if you're going to be a major player, you have to have a whole range of product, right? And and so that range constitutes pricing and things like that. But you try to pull over the feature set as much as you can from those enterprise, highly scalable solutions, highly technical solutions down into the into the lowest markets. And we have sister companies and partners and all kinds of things that address all of those technology questions, right? And, and, and there's and a lot of change. So you're not just DOD. I mean, you were talking mm -hmm. now that you, know, you can get down to the, the ma and pa's who can afford because of the cloud and other things right. to, to bring in a, a great product or a great solution set that you, you can provide to them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's it's important to be able to provide that that wide range of capabilities as well as cost to to try to because you know every every Fortune ten company started as a small little startup at some point. Right. right. It's it's hard to remember back when Apple was sort of nothing, but look at where Apple and Facebook and Google and Salesforce. Right. You go look at the right. San Francisco skyline now. It's being Twitter, fundamentally Paul Box. I go down the list well, of all these the, startups. The newest, yeah. the newest building in in San Francisco is the Salesforce Tower, and it's how many stories? It's twenty, thirty stories taller than the the, la the tallest building. It's the tallest building west of the Mississippi right now. And those have to be secured. The, they're highly secured, right? These are sophisticated uh, technology companies that that understand better their risks, and so we can sort of get into that conversation about. Um, there's a lot of risk out there right now. And corporations, you, you talk about the, the Sony situation, the Target right. situation, right. and others. Home Depot. Where, yeah, Home Depot, where sort of apathy um, and not really paying attention to where the risks are perhaps led to some of those, those problems. And, and so now the other, their peers, right, all the peers of those companies that had those issues, they are looking at their entire solution set and saying, okay, that cannot happen to us. Because what was the biggest really problem with all of those situations? The stock value of those companies dropped instantly and yep. dramatically and, and, and exponentially would have funded all the technology needed to, to seal those gaps. So now when we go and we talk to customers that are considering our product or, or other solutions, that's one of the main conversations is the cybersecurity aspect of it and what are we doing to help combat those types of situations where people could get in through any different means to access your systems and do something right and wrong. cameras I mean I've, yeah. I've seen I've seen it I've seen it with clients where um, they have a, uh, a client that has a camera that's pinging China a hundred thousand times a month yeah. why is that camera pinging China a hundred thousand they say I'm here I'm here I'm here and there's yeah. a way into this there's a way into this network this is where you got to be careful it's yeah. the two of them are together now it used to be guys selling cameras out of the back of a car. Yeah, and, and some of the and some of those penetrations into those other companies that that, that we mentioned happen through systems that we don't think of as high tech, yeah. building systems, air and conditioning like system, it. air conditioning yeah. system, and and you know these are all devices now that are on the network. Right. Right. So the network is the infrastructure. It's the internet. Everything's connected. The internet of things. Right. Every, millions and billions of things are are now interconnected in some way. Even our phones are connected. Right. And so. The, the phone becomes an interesting part of the conversation that it's now oh, yeah. it's now a security tool. I got in my pocket, right? But, I mean, it is. It's a, it's a massive part of what of, of what we do today. Yeah. So now, so but you're a systems integrator in, in, per se because you not only do you got, and this is where I think the complexity is. You've got door access, cameras, 
you've got credentialing, you know, my ID, who I am, am I allowed to be on campus? You know, whether you, you know, you know let's take out like a hospital or a, a hospital, yes, but a pretty example. There are so many different kinds of people on that premise. That's right. There are patients, there are visitors, there are vendors, there are the employees. And how do you manage all of those individuals wandering through essentially acres of campus? Mm -hmm. There's a, um, because of our customer base, there's, there's a lot of conversations we get drawn into. And, and there's a concept called duty of care, right? And, oh, and so okay. in certain cities, San Francisco being one of them, um, it, is, it is city law, it is county law that uh, there needs to be mass notification capabilities in all these public buildings that have the public walking through them. So not only their own employees and things like that, but um, not Megan's Law, but... Um, well, Megan's Law is the um, um, kidnapping. Um, Amber Please. Alert. Amber Alert. So, yeah. so, so the Amber Alert and things like that are, are, are riding on the backbone of a lot of these mass notification systems. And believe it or not, that becomes part of the security ecosystem that right. becomes part of the solution. Mm. So we have physical access control, and which is what we do. Universities, et cetera, et cetera. Well, but here's great, a great example. Even here, you know, in uh, the University of Hawaii to get the this, this safety messages out to the students. All the students. Well, these, and, these are all, and their parents. That's right. But these are They're all right. businesses, too. And so yeah. you, you think about universities and the cost. We, we live, you know, relatively close to Stanford. It's very expensive. UH, I imagine, is not inexpensive, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a big campus. And it's a huge yeah. campus. Multiple and, locations. And open. Multiple locations and extremely open. Uh, very, very difficult to secure. But think about all the parents and the, the loved ones that are sending their children there. If incidents happen, things like that, how many parents would, would pull their kids out and, and take them somewhere? I, you know, I'm a parent. I know what I would do in that, that situation. So, so universities, all their peers, everybody's looking at all these security threats and saying, look, we need to do this for the safety of our systems, right. our technologies, our intellectual property, but also our assets, the students. And right. we need to reassure the parents and provide all these solutions to fill these gaps because they're going to walk if you don't. So, and Lisa, then, you have a comment. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that the campus environment at a university translates over into the Silicon Valley companies around in the area, too, that we were talking about because they – their challenge is they want it an open environment. They mm -hmm. want to be open. They want to show that people are around, that they can go wherever they want to go. But their challenge is they want to know where their people are, and they want to know if somebody is on their campus that shouldn't be there. And it's really hard to do, to, to balance those two things. And so that's where we and our partners try to go in and, and realize what are the technologies out there that we can use to to bridge the gap as much as possible and minimize their risk while still leaving sort of this open campus, campus environment. environment. Uh, so, go ahead. I mean, and kind of a two-part two piece of the need and the want to provide openness, but also the administrative responsibility to, to provide a safe and secure environment. And, Which is and, getting tougher and, and tougher. Yes. And, and, and aren't those often at odds, those yeah, two things? they are. Right? Exactly. So there's, there's some natural tension there that, that you have to do. You really have to do both, right, right in some way. We, we have an interesting um, bubble or culture in the Silicon Valley, right? The, the, the millennials that, that are defining. Like one of my favorite topics. It, it, yeah. it, it, it's an interesting <laughs> topic because they're defining the workplace now, right? So, right. so in the Silicon Valley, um, labor is really hard to find, and so there's a Welcome lot to of. Hawaii. That's right, right. It's not. It's really not that different, um, and and so there's a lot of competition with companies, and it's a very open office environment now. So that exposes some security threat. Um, culturally, everybody's using their phones. They're laying around on couches, and these are formal. <laughs> corporate environments, <laughs> you know, there's nobody other than, than banks and things, CFOs perhaps, yeah. <laughs> that aren't in Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> that are wearing ties, everybody else is wearing as, it. As, as, like this. Okay, with that, That's laying right. around on couches, <laughs> we're going to take a minute break. What a great segue to coming back on this. You know, it sounds like, uh, uh, well, give the union a shaka. Anyway, <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. I got Rich and Lisa here from Linnell, which is one of the, if, if not the largest um, physical security and cybersecurity systems integrator in, in the country with lots of experience. So we're going to take a break, pay some bills, and we'll be back in about a minute.
watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. I think, sir. Aloha, Gordon of the Tech are here. Welcome back to Yabaji Talk. We just paid some bills, so we're going to be around for at least another <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Yabaji Talk is self-funded. What can I say? Anyway, I got the Fundmeister over in the corner. I got Rich Lyman from uh, Linnell Systems. I got Lisa Bradshaw from Linnell Systems, and we're talking about cyber and physical security. We also do this in a podcast, too. So we not only do it, uh, this, we, do, we podcast, podcast it also. So of our, for our thousands of viewers. Anyway, we were talking about people laying on couches a minute ago before we took this Sorry. break. <laughs> Let the millennials give the union a shaka. Anyway, so let's, oh, careful, careful, Sorry. girl, don't fall off. <laughs> anyway, I don't know, get y'all excited. Like I do that to all of you. <laughs> I've been accused of flirting with the female guests, and my comment was, and? <laughs> anyway, so let's, no wonder a Lelo never picks us up. <laughs> anyway, so let's come back to that, because then we got the millennials who are used to an open environment, don't want to see the cameras around, and cameras are more than cameras today. But so, how are you, how are you dealing with this cultural thing? I mean, I personally don't care if I'm being watched. I really, I already feel I am, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. But how do you deal with this? In your, with, especially in your industry, in your business. Yes. I, I read an article the other day that said the millennials are now the largest um, uh, generation that we've ever had on this planet, um, and there's a there's sort of a huge shift between the generation before that, that, that perhaps I'm part of and, 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 and the next. And, and it's very open, um, there's a lot of competition, uh, they expect everything on their phones, and it, it, it's changed the, the, the look and feel of the workplace, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's changed the look and feel of our software, right? And yep. so we, yeah. we've really had to uh, we hired a whole group of people just to work on user experience, right? So we, we've That's always talked cool about thing. GUIs and graphical interfaces, right. and nobody ever really asked the why, right? So that was the what and the how, and, you know, you show up to work and you sit at this desk and it's the, the computer's bolted to the table. I think the current generations, the newer generations are asking why. Right. We heard somebody else talk about, um, yeah, exactly why. Live life. Take the technology where you are. Yep. Get as much work done as you, as you can wherever you are. And so it's actually affecting our industry and, and, and the way we develop software. That's pushing us into the cloud. It's pushing us into browsers and things that work on any kind of technology you have. It has to just work, right? Companies like this have yep. defined this for us, right? And it's, it's us folks that are sort of from those previous generations that are really struggling with these, these concepts. But it's the millennials that will be the next CFOs, that will be the next IT directors. Well, some of them already are, and they're or, putting or, me over the edge. Or, or, or already are. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. What I find interesting is that the, here's the thing about the millennials, and I, I do, I love them to death because they're just the way they forward think. Is that, but what I'm finding is the millennials is they don't adapt the cloud as much as I think they would. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a senior citizen, dude. I'm a great grandfather. I, I embrace the crowd, the crowd, and that too. The <laughs> yeah. crowd and the cloud. Especially if they're but, women. But, um, but I find the millennials go like, they want to they bring the servers yeah. back in house and yeah. hug them over in a corner. It's driving me crazy. Yet they want all this openness. They went, well, but I don't want a badge. I just want to be able to walk by the reader, have it know my phone is there, and allow me to get in the door. Yeah. And, that's and, how it's got. And, and that's a reality today. So those technologies are real, and you can actually do that. And, and there's, there's, there's value to that. I, I think culturally, culturally low is which is really what you're speaking to. There's this, again, there's this tension, right? They, they want new, fast, cool 
uh, mobile, all of these things. They want this user experience is very different than the user experience we've sort of all put up with our workplaces and, and, and life and such. Um, and, and, and yet they're not embracing some of these these millennial concepts like the cloud, whereas the rest of us are sort of just resigned to, ah, I've been giving out my social security number for I know. 30, it doesn't matter. 35 years. You know it. If you don't know it by now, then shame on you. That's right. That's right. That's right. But it, it is redefining, I think, the way we... But you're in this, way, Lisa, you're in this, you're in this, this group, this, the millennial cusp area and so on, so you've got to be struggling with the old futs like us who have our... We're used to signing in on a piece of paper and don't care. And someone else who says, you know, I'm not signing in. Well, and so I think I'm sort of for myself, I'm always looking to see. So, so that's why I'm in the security industry and why I stayed in the security industry because of technology and because of the movement of things. So I think if you look at it that way and always sort of see, you know, how are we going to make things easier for people and still mitigate any risk that's right. there. So I think when you start talking about the cloud and everything moving to the cloud and, and people being really conscious about that, people just don't know whether it's really safe or not. So I think as we begin to realize it is safe, it's safer than what you can do otherwise, you still have accessibility, it's cheaper, it's, it's, it's faster, whatever. Right. That it's more it will, The adoption rate will go up. I think there's, we talked about early adopters, I think there's a, it's at that stage, we look at salesforce.com, we use that for our, for our Salesforce automation right. software. I don't even think twice about it. Yeah, and I, it's, it's just the right? way of life. It's, it's just, just there. It's just how it is. It's like yeah. electricity, like turning on the light and it's there. Yeah. When yeah. you start talking about video and stuff that has a lot more bandwidth and that sort of thing, it may be a little more difficult in enterprise scale solutions to use that kind of technology. But we're not even using, I mean, if anyone, if anyone to this day has an enterprise class operation and you're still doing, v, still doing VCR tapes, if you start still doing VCR <laughs> tapes, then shame on you. That's yeah, all that's I can crazy. say is shame on you. It's crazy. Yeah. And if you're still, in my opinion, if you're still using a DVR, then it's shame on you because you, <coughs> you do not need DVRs anymore. I mean, no. give me a break. Get yeah, real. And, 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 and where the state of video <coughs> has gone is now we're talking about 4K, and right? So, yep. so, so it's this beautiful quality picture takes exponentially more bandwidth and more storage. And, right. and so here we are sort of fighting against, yeah, I mean, we're from the Silicon Valley. There's a lot more bandwidth there, but... We're taking four times the data now that we were before. Right. The reality is these now, we can, we can use the, the, the cameras on phones and stream them into these enterprise you know, video platforms and record them live. And so right. that situational uh, awareness aspect, you can be right in the middle of a situation, enable that functionality on somebody's phone and stream it back to this the security operations center who's there with a bunch of professionals that know what they're doing. Right. And, and first responders that know what to do. First responders. That's the thing. First policemen. Can they, you imagine a first responder can come up and you can say, oh, by the way, here on my iPad, this is what we've got going on. That's right. right. Here's this camera in the back. Here's this over here. We've got this over here. We've got this over here. It's all right when they walk up to the door. And That's we right. can do that today. That's right. Affordably, we can do that today. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And I, you know, I, have, I have clients that are got an iPhone and cameras on one side and opening doors on the other. That's yeah. right. Just That's doing right. it right there. Just it, simple. It's, it's today's technology. It's real. I, I think adoption is a whole other conversation, right? Our, our <coughs> industry tends to be a little laggard in that sense. It tends to be a little conservative because of the nature of who, 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 who are the directors and, 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 and who run these security departments in these corporations. But that's where the next couple of generations maybe change this dramatically. So you, you brought up a good point. So where are the security departments? Typically the security departments, I think, reported to the maintenance department or something. Facilities. Where do they report now? Maintenance, facility, but now <coughs> it's, it's IT. And, and IT interestingly enough, it's, it's finance, it's HR, it's, it's, it's things you wouldn't expect. It, yeah. but, but it makes sense, right? Um, it is a critical business function. Right, it is life safety. Um, it is the protection of intellectual property. Um, it's riding on the backbone of the infrastructure of all of our businesses and our homes. It's wireless networks. It's it's the IT infrastructure, and 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 so there needs to be synergy there. And so they're they're finding it just makes more sense to just have them report up through through those departments in the organization that have the than, business that have the business uh, yeah. business in mind. So no, I'm going to yeah. jump to another because I try to cover so much. What about ACLU? I just love 
I didn't, I'd throw this law this out of nowhere. ACLU, because I, when I was with the sitting and counting of Honolulu, we tried to put in some cameras <laughs> for APEC, you know, to secure the areas. I had to fight ACLU to allow me to put cameras in just to monitor what was going on to protect the citizens. Do you got, so how is that, is that, is that changing? Is the mindset changing in that space? It may be a tough question for you to ask, because it's out of nowhere, but you got to, it's, it's, it's there. I think every organization has a different sort of read on that, right? Um, I think as technology providers, as, as trusted advisors, we, we, we just sort of have to educate the, the, the market, our markets that, 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 we, that we sell into on what are the various technologies that are available to you and, and what can you do if you have those challenges, right. right? As an example, cameras. If you need to mask off an area um, so that sensitive information or people or someone's children or whatever it is, those are capabilities of today's, of modern technology. Yeah, cameras right? are smart enough to know that. that. That's right. They're smart enough to know that. They have analytics built into them now. They can, they can do a lot of things people probably don't understand they, that they can do. Yeah. Um, I know. I saw one of the things where there was a, um, a um, I think it was one of your systems where um, monitoring an area and a bag was showing up and a bag showed up in a particular area and this didn't make sense. It was a backpack. It's like, wait, this backpack has been sitting there for way too long, unattended, alert. I mean, not like, boom, send in police and everything, but there's something, an anomaly yeah. there. And the smarts are in the systems to do that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's object left behind and things like that, right? The, the, that are yeah, there. they could have just forgot and got on the bus and left it sitting on the bench. That's right. You were going to say something. No, I am just was going to say yeah, video, the video analytics side of the business has been sort of stop and start and stop and start. But I think now they've become just features on a camera. So you buy a camera and you don't even know that they potentially are even there. And you can combine multiple analytics to create an, a, sort of a situation that then can become actionable. Mm -hmm. Whereas before you would never even have that. And, so, and, we'll, I'll, and I'll add to that. Let's, I'll, take it, I'll twist it a little bit. Not to, so it's not in the preventive side. I, ha I had a client that were using camera analytics when they, people went into their store to track where they, which yeah. counters they went to mm -hmm. and which products they bought mm. and which products they abandoned. And based on that analytics, mm -hmm. they were determining product, the box, the, the placement. package, the mm -hmm. placement, how whatever, much it cost, how much it cost, and, they were, and they were doing it at that level. <laughs> yeah, and, interesting. And, and maybe the, the demographics yeah. of the customer as yeah. well. That's true. Uh, but like for this, they know the fundmeisters they ain't gonna spend any money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's lovely broad mind. <laughs> All right, believe it or not, we have burned through the entire show in like in no time. But when you guys come back in the next quarter, you uh, you gotta promise me you come on the show again. We continue we're this about, story as, as it's turned out. So we've got Rich Lyman, Lisa Bradshaw. I can't, why do I, I want to change the name to something Go else? Ahead. Lisa Bradshaw and Rich Lyman from Linnell System. Thank you guys for, for joining us. Fun Meister, thank you very much. Gotcha. As we as again, as we always say at the end of your show, one, two, three. How are you doing? <laughs> <How you doing? laughs>